Ladies and gentlemen, today I claim a new throne, the world's largest public database of IEM measurements, this time on the Ruin Care Type 5128. Now, a lot of you might be thinking to yourselves, uh, Crin, why, what even is this? Who even asked? So hold on to your bootstraps, buckle down your underwear. Today, I shall be explaining to you in the nerdiest way possible why exactly you should care and why this is such a big deal. Yes, today is the official release of my 5128 IEM measurements database. Now, I'm not the first one or the only one to be owning a Brew and Care Type 5128. You have Sound Guys, you have Hit5, Jude Mansilla, you have Linus Tech Tips Man himself, as well as my friends over at headphones.com. Also the sponsor of this video. Headphones.com is the premier online audio retailer for those of you residing in the continental United States as well as Canada. Pick and choose from a wide range of enthusiast level products ranging from DAX, AMS, IEMs and of course headphones. And to sweeten the deal, Headphones.com also has an unprecedented 365 day return policy. So if you want to, you could also just use them to try out some headphones that you otherwise wouldn't be able to try. There is still a restocking fee, but it's so much better than having to sell your regrets at a loss, right? Go to Headphones.com, tell them I sent you, and of course, support the people who support me. This is the new 5128. I'm sure some of you have already seen the video where I unboxed this beauty, $20,000 worth, and I was so nervous to the point where I was basically a sweating, uh, broken wreck. This essentially is a new standard under ITU TP57 type 4.3, bunch of numbers that you probably don't care about. Essentially, one big issue that the previous measurement rigs have is that they simply stopped at something called the reference point. Because simply there was no way to go as deep as the eardrum to try and find out all of the structural internal differences of the human ear. Now, Brewer and Care for the Type 5128 and by extension the 4620 have decided to use MRI scans of human heads to get a proper internal look at the human ear, which is why you see something like this. It's kind of angled, not straight because human ears aren't straight into your head. What that means is that theoretically, this should be the most accurate measurement system emulating a human ear ever. Theoretically. Contrast this with the previous standard, which is the IEC 60318-4, or more commonly known as the 711 coupler. This is what they have claimed to be a huge massive step forward, hence why it essentially rewrites the standard. But there are a few issues with this. First of all, is that most of us, we are used to looking at 7-Eleven measurements. Something like this, unfortunately, not a lot of people are publishing measurements, not a lot of people are publishing actual public data for us to analyze and get used to. My ultimate overarching goal is to simply throw out as many data points as possible so you, the reader, can slowly, eventually get used to the concept of the 5128 measurements because unfortunately or fortunately, it measures quite differently from your standard 7-Eleven coupler. The main difference is that this thing measures with less base. That's the most layman that I can put it. When you measure this compared to a 7-Eleven, this should have overall less volume under 500 hertz. There are some high frequency differences, but it's not as drastic, or should I say it's not as consistent as that of the low frequency effects. So if you're looking at 5128 measurements from now, and if you are already used to 7-Eleven measurements, you should kind of already visualize or imagine that the 5128 is going to have like a general notch down at the frequencies under 500 hertz. But the interesting byproduct about all of this is that based on my own testing, this new rig, this 5128, especially just for the IEM measurements, you could use your headphone target curve for IEMs as well, which 
was not the case for the 7-Eleven. Essentially what this means is that if you have established a target curve, it can now be used for both the headphone measurements on 5128 as well as the IEM measurements. No longer would you have to say, oh, this is my IEM target curve and oh, here's my headphone target curve. Both of them use the same. Same pull, no more confusion. And I think that is such a nice change to have. So too long didn't watch. These are the two main benefits. First of all, is that it emulates the human ear much more closely because it uses data from MRI scans all the way down into the eardrum, which was not the case for 7-Eleven couplers. The second big benefit, again, still testing out this theory, is that you now don't have to have separate targets for headphones as well as IEMs. You simply just have parity for both. Now, the problem is that this is not a flawless system. There are still some teething issues, some problems that I have with this. First of which is that because it is a pinner, it is super finicky. It is very, very inconsistent. It is very hard to actually measure this, especially relative to a 7-Eleven coupler, which is simply just a metal canal. So what this means is that for stuff like resonance peak matching, it's not going to be as easy as on a 7-Eleven coupler. So some measurements that you see on my database right now may not have the same resonance peak, but that's only because I'm essentially fitting them as you would on a human being. You yourself, you've put IEMs into your ears, you're not going to have the exact same insertion depth for both ears. And the same problem applies here. So essentially, when it comes to decision, that is to say repeatable results, the old 7-Eleven coupler is still king. But this thing still reigns supreme when it comes to accuracy. Again, theoretically. The other problem that we have with this system right here is that it is not compatible with existing research that was made on the 7-Eleven system. Most notably, the Harman target. Sean Olive himself had come down to the New York Canjam and presented a talk about how the 5128 can be used in Harman research. Extrapolation from the 7-Eleven to the 5128 is not ideal because the pinner is different, the cancellations are different, a lot of things cannot be simply just done on a statistical level. So I'm not exaggerating when I say every single Harman target all the way from 2013 all the way to the new IE 2019 are incompatible with this even if you do extrapolation from 7-Eleven into the 5128. Again, not recommended. So what that means is that there is no statistically significant preference curve for the 5128. We could wait for Harman to eventually get the research done on the 5128, but unfortunately, they have been very strict about privatizing their research from here. Or we can do something a little different, which makes use of the principles that were used in the Harman research. At this point, the data should be uploaded. You should be able to see everything in my graph comparison tool. But my own overarching goals are slightly different from here. For one thing, what I would like to do is to have variable tilts that are user specified. And if it sounds very complicated, it just simply means that you can tilt the diffuse field target to any direction that you want and essentially create your own target curve. So my philosophy for all of this is that there is no one true target. Sean Olive himself said that the Harman target was simply a statistical exercise, simply using the Harman target and decrying anything that didn't hit it was entirely, entirely missing the point. What I would like to do instead is to take a reference baseline, in this case, the fuse field, allow the user or the reader to adjust the tilt as well as the base boost as they see fit. So for example, my personal preference curve is to have a negative 0.8 decibels per octave tilt. That is to say, if the difference between 20 hertz and 20,000 hertz is about 8 decibels. And then on top of that, I would like, say, I don't know, a 5 decibel bass boost starting at about 115 hertz, so to speak. That's around where the harm target sits it at. So from here, my idea is to have people be able to describe their own target curve with simply two parameters, the tilt 
and the boost. And what I would like to encourage with all of this is, again, moving away from the concept of the one true target. The Harman curve was not meant for that. And therefore, with this new era of measurements coming in with the 5128, I hope to let people know that just because you like something that is straying away from the average, doesn't mean that you're wrong. It's subjective. The feature for the tilt and the boost parameters aren't currently in the graph comparison tool. I don't think, not as of this video, I think. Just use them, experiment it around, determine what exactly your ideal tilt as well as your ideal boost is. And with that in mind, that is the kind of the end of the announcement and the end of the explanations. The 5128 I see as a very important piece of equipment in today's hobby. And even as this video is being done and edited and published, we are still in the middle of collecting even more measurements, even more data, eventually building up to the headphone flat plate rig that would, and making sure that this thing would be able to measure headphones as well. For now, because this is simply a 4620, I would be limiting myself just to IEMs. Just for now. We'll see. As per usual, for those who have subscribed to the $20 tier on my Patreon, here are all of your names. And for those who subscribe to the $30 tier, allow me to speak out your beautiful names once again. Dennis McMadface, Seswata, TJ Daly, Krina Gell, Alicia Burrito, Alex, Andrew, Frit, Pitt Vanderwit, Posit Chronic, Amber, Shwini, Drummy, Prenut Butter, Drazar, Dragons Broken, and Wata. I thank you all. Yes, I iterate again. Look forward to more measurements. This is the thing that I'm most known for, so clearly this is something that I would like to prioritize. Don't ask about the ranking list. See you next week and don't die. Fuck off. Thank you.